So we want to continue our discussion of the natural logarithm function. We talked about quite a few properties. First of all, we talked about the definition of natural logarithm and how it relates to area of the function of 1 over 1 to x of 1 over t dt, the integral of 1 to x of 1 over t dt. That's hard to say. We talked about properties where we can expand or condense. We took some limits. Well, I'm going to continue the conversation by saying... E, how is E defined? Check this out, this is interesting. E is defined to be the value that if we find the area from 1 to that value of 1 over t dt, the answer is 1. So the area is 1. So E is the value of the upper limit that will give us an exact area of 1 of 1 over t dt. Interesting, right? Now, over here, we know that if we take the natural log of E, the answer is 1. You know this from previous algebra courses. Those cancel each other out because they are inverses of each other. So if I carry on, differentiability. If we take the derivative of natural log of x, we know that's going to be 1 over x. Why? Because remember the definition of the natural log of x. So natural log of x is defined to be the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. So if we want to find the natural log of x, we plug in our upper limit, that'd be 1 over x, okay? and then plus c, but then when you take the derivative, the c goes to 0. So basically, we get 1 over x. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Um, also, I want to give you the chain rule. The chain rule, if you have something other than just x in your function, the derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u times the derivative of the inside. You'll see that happen. So, so let's do a problem, okay? So we've got y equals natural log of x squared plus 3. Now again, if that was just find the derivative of y equals natural log of x, it'd just be 1 over x, and you'd be done with it. So all the problems you're going to see is going to have something other than just x in here, more than likely. So... We're using the chain rule, okay? So y primed, use proper notation, or you could say dy over dx, both of those are the same, you never have to say both, is going to be 1 over x squared plus 3, that's this part, 1 over u, and then times the derivative of u with respect to x, so the derivative of the inside is 2x. I could write that to make it look a little better, 2x over x squared plus 3. So there's your first derivative of a natural log function. Now here, we're going to have to use the product rule, right? Because we're multiplying. So I have y primed is equal to, remember it's the first, times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of natural log of x? Well, we just learned it. It's 1 over x. And then plus the second, which is natural log of x, parentheses not required, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of x is just 1. Now you do want to simplify that as much as possible. You'll notice x times 1 over x is just 1, and then when I multiply natural log of x times 1, of course I just get natural log of x. So that derivative is 1 plus the natural log of x. So we've got two more derivative problems for you before we learn something new in this section. Now I want you to see what's happening here, and we may want to rewrite this so it feels a little better. This is the natural log of the natural log of x, okay? So we have an inside function and an outside function, right? So when you take the derivative of that, you're using the chain rule, you agree? So I have y primed is going to be 1 over, well, let me stop. The derivative of the outside function. So again, what's the outside function? It's the natural log. So it's going to be, the derivative of natural log is 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so that's going to be 1 over 
what's inside, which is natural log of x, times the derivative, and the derivative of the inside, the derivative of that guy right there, is 1 over x. Now you could write that in simpler form. That would be y prime equals 1 over x times the natural log of x. I just moved this x in the denominator in front because algebraically it looks better. So did you follow that? So natural log, this natural log is the outside function, whereas natural log of x there is the inside function. So the derivative of natural log is always 1 over what's in there. So it's going to be 1 over natural log of x, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay, now the next problem that we take a look at over here, you can go ahead and say, okay, this is natural log of all this, right? All that's on the inside. So it would be 1 over all that times the derivative of all that. Now, y'all y'all remember, when you take the derivative of square root of x minus 1 over x plus 1, you got a lot going on. You've got to use the chain rule because you have a square root on the outside. And then you, when you take the derivative of the inside, you would have to use the quotient rule as well. So this problem could potentially be a small nightmare to work through. So I have a suggestion. Why don't we expand? Because remember, when you expand your logarithms, you really have the same expression, just written in a different form. So if we expand this, the first thing I need to do is I need to think about this as y is equal to the natural log of x minus 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? which means that one half can come in front. So that gives me y equals one half. Now it applies to everything we're gonna do. I have a quotient, so I can split that up as the natural log of x minus one minus the natural log of x plus one. In a pre-cal class, I'd probably do that in two steps, but you've done this before, right? So division, again, turns into two separate logarithms, subtracting. But when you have an exponent, and that exponent applied to that whole thing, so it goes out in front of the whole expression over here. Now, if you wanted to, you could distribute that one half inside. So it would be a one half in front of each of those separate natural logs. I don't think that's necessary. Now I want to take the derivative. So I have y prime equals. Now we know when we take a derivative, this is a scalar multiple, so it can come down directly. And then I take the derivative of this first term inside. So the derivative of natural log is always 1 over the inside, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, minus, now I do the same thing on this one, it's 1 over the inside, which is x plus 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. When I simplify, I have 1 half, and that would be 1 over x minus 1, minus 1 over x plus 1, and we are finished with that problem. If you wanted to distribute the one half inside, you could. That'd be one over two parentheses x minus one minus one over two parentheses x plus one. But of course, there's nothing wrong with this answer either. Now, let me show you something new, and it's a great skill to have. I wanna talk about logarithmic differentiation. Now, if you think about the problem we just completed, let me go back and take a look at it. The second problem here, J, I talked about it, I didn't do it this way, because it would have taken this complete page and another page or two just to do the algebra, but we could leave it like this, and when you take the derivative of the outside function, you do 1 over what you have inside, so derivative of natural log is 1 over x, and then we would have to use the chain rule and the quotient rule to complete this problem. It would be a lot of work, so we expanded it. What we are about to learn is you can do that with regular functions as well. You don't have to have a natural log in your original problem. You could do logarithmic differentiation. Let's go through the steps and then we'll apply that to this problem. So first of all, the steps for logarithmic differentiation, first take the natural log of both sides. So if you have some really complicated looking expression, and we'll talk about this complicated expression in a minute, the first thing you do is go, I don't want to take the derivative of that. It's just a nightmare, a large nightmare this one would be. So you would take the natural log of both sides. Then you simplify it. And when I say simplify, you're expanding 
okay? You would expand the expression because you'll have a natural log here. You differentiate both sides of the equation, you solve for y prime, and you replace y with the value of y. You'll see what I mean in the middle of the problem. Now, before we jump in and do these steps, which is so much simpler than finding this derivative, let's talk about how in the world we would go about finding this derivative. Um, first of all, I would rewrite x squared, the square root of 2x minus 1, I'd write it to the 1 half, and then the cubed root of that whole expression I would write to the 1 third, okay? Now your outside function would be the cubed root or the 1 third power, so we would use the power rule, okay? Rewrite the inside, this is the chain rule we're using, but when you take the derivative of the inside, folks, that's, that's a product rule and a quotient rule going on. Your next big rule would be product rule, and then you would work with, I mean quotient rule, I'm sorry, then you would work with product rule inside of that, and I'm just telling you, it, it would, we've never done one together that was this complicated at all. There's a lot going on here. You have two chain rules going on. You have product rule, you have quotient rule. Um, you might even have three chain rules going on, I believe you do. So, mm -mm. no, we don't want any part of that. So, there's an easier way to take the derivative, and it's called logarithmic differentiation. So, first step, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do what it says. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. So, I have the natural log of y on the left, and the natural log of this whole expression on the right. Now, watch this. When I rewrite it, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these radicals as rational exponents, in other words, fractions. So we've got x squared times 2x minus 1 to the 1 half divided by x plus 2 squared, and that's all raised to the 1 third power. You comfortable with that? So step, step two, simplify. We've already started the simplification process. Now we know when we have a logarithm, we are allowed to pull the exponent in front. And notice there's a lot of exponents going on. Each one of these factors has an exponent, but this one third applies to the entire expression, which means I can move it in front now. So now I have natural log of y on the left. Don't forget about what that on the left, okay? And then you have one third, and then you have natural log of x squared times 2x minus 1 to the 1 half over x plus 2 squared, like that. So we move the 1 third in front. Now what I can do is expand all of this. If you'll remember, a product is addition of two separate logarithms, and a quotient in other words, when you divide, is subtraction of logarithms. So on the left, I have natural log of y. I have a one-third. Now I need some brackets because I'm about to expand all this, and this one-third applies to all of this that I'm about to write. So it's going to be natural log of x squared plus natural log of 2x minus 1 to the one-half minus, because this is coming from a denominator, natural log of x plus 2 squared. Comfortable with that? Now the, the final step, and notice I haven't taken a derivative yet, I'm still working in step 2. The final step would be in the simplification process is to move these exponents in front. So this 2 is going to go right here, this 1 half is going to go right here in front of the logarithm, and this 2 is going to go right here in front of our logarithm, okay? I'm going to try to write this at the top so I still have room to work. Natural log of y is on the left, don't forget about that, 1 third, and then bracket, and now I have 2 natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of 2x minus 1 minus 2, I can't even read that anymore, um, yeah, that is a 2, minus 2 natural log of x plus 2. I apologize for that being so small. Hopefully you can stay with me. So that is completely expanded. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Pause it if you have to and work through that in your head. Now, finally, step 3, differentiate both sides of the equation. Okay? All right, I think I'm going to change colors just so it's a little easier to see what's going on. So step 3 is going to be blue. So when I take the derivative of natural log, remember that's going to be derivative of the outside, 
and you rewrite the inside. So 1 over y, but I'm taking the derivative of y with respect to x. So I still have to put times y prime. Do you remember doing that from implicit differentiation? When you take the derivative of y, you have to put times... Actually, we use dy over dx. Let me back up. There we go. Okay, or you could write y primed. And so right here when I say solve for y primed, you could say solve for dy over dx. It's the same thing. Now on the right, I have one third and then a bracket. Now the derivative of natural log of x, remember, is 1 over x. So this 2 in front is a scalar multiple. So it would be 2 times 1 over x plus the 1 half is a scalar multiple. The, the derivative of natural log of 2x minus 1 is going to be 1 over 2x minus 1. But times the derivative of the inside, this is the chain rule, so times 2 minus, okay, this is the 2 in front. The derivative of the natural log of x plus 2 is going to be 1 over x plus 2. And the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. Okay, now let's make this look a little bit better. When I'm looking inside here, this 2 and this 2 cancel. That's all that I can see that happens as far as cancellation goes. So let's keep going. That was step three. Uh, let's change to green for the simplification step. Now, notice it says solve for y primed or dy over dx. I'm trying to get this dy over dx by itself on one side. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So I have now I have dy over dx is equal to y times one third, I'm going to write this a little simpler, this is 2 over x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 2. That looks a little better, right? Now this y and this one third, I could write the one third in front, or I could distribute the one third inside, but I'm also supposed to replace y with what y is. What is y? It's our original problem, right? So final answer, dy over dx is equal to y, which is the cubed root of this, x squared times the square root of 2x minus 1 over x plus 2 squared. Notice I just rewrote the original problem, okay? I could put the 1 third in front of there and then times 2 over x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 2. Now, could this be simplified, find a common denominator, all that good stuff? Sure. Yeah, and you may even be able to simplify it with this cubed root going on over here. But, you know, it depends on what you're doing with your derivative. If you're just trying to find the slope of a tangent line at a certain point, why do all that work? Just find the derivative, plug in your x value, and be done with it. So sometimes you need to simplify this. Sometimes it's good just as it is. It really depends on the problem. Y'all, can you imagine, I have in class before asked students to find the derivative of something like this using the old rules and then compare it to the answer here and get them to match. Now that could be an enormous day-long process as you can imagine but I want you to appreciate and this is why I've done this in class before I want students to appreciate how difficult this is versus how easy this is. And again, if you're just finding the slope of the tangent line at a certain point, you don't need a completely simplified derivative. You just need the slope of the tangent line, and you plug in the x, and you're done. So this is a really neat trick. It's one of my favorite things in calculus is to learn a trick where you can just take the natural log of both sides and find that the derivative is so much easier. The last property I'd like to go over is, is also without proof. But um, it says that the derivative of natural log of the absolute value of u. So, so remember what we've always done with absolute values is we've re rewritten the problem as a piecewise function. Okay, In this case, we don't have to do that because we have a theorem that says if you have the derivative of natural log of the absolute value of something, okay, then that's just going to be u primed over u. By the way, that's just 1 over u times the derivative of u. It's just a different way of writing it. It's what we did earlier, but it applies when you have an absolute value inside as well. So if I do this particular problem, if I ask you to find the derivative of natural log of the absolute value of sine of x, and you'll see that a lot because you can't take 
the logarithm of a negative number, right? So if you have an absolute value in there, that's making whatever in there positive, so it's making it possible for you to find the logarithm. So this is very common that you see an absolute value inside a logarithm. But anyway, it just says it's just whatever u times u prime. So when we take this derivative, it's just going to be 1 over our u is sine of x, right? What's the derivative of sine of x? Y'all all know. It's the cosine of x, and that's it. So this is the cosine of x over the sine of x. I am perfectly content with that answer, but y'all also know that is the cotangent of x, correct? Okay, I have a final natural log problem for you to think about. It says find the relative extrema. So you remember the steps to do that? So relative extrema, I mean relative maximum, relative minimum. It's a first derivative thing, right? So we first of all, we need to take the first derivative. So y primed equals, now this is quotient rule. This is your top, this is your bottom. I know you see that. So you have the bottom times the derivative of the top. Remember the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x minus the top, which is natural log of x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, don't forget, over the denominator squared. So I simplify. This x times 1 over x is just 1 minus the natural log of x over x squared. Your next step would be to find critical numbers. Remember, critical numbers happen in two different places. They happen where their derivative is equal to 0. So where is y primed equal to 0? And where is y primed undefined? Okay. Now y primed equals 0 when the whole fraction is equal to 0. First thing I would do is multiply both sides by x squared. So essentially it's where the numerator is equal to 0. So I can add natural log of x. Where is 1 equal to the natural log of x? Well, we defined that earlier. That's e, right? Um, or you could go back to the, your solving steps that you learned in a pre-cal class. Natural log is base e. If I rewrote this in exponential form, that would say e to the exponent. A logarithm is always equal to an exponent is equal to x. In other words, x is equal to e, or e to the first, which is like 2.187818, you know, you know that number, okay? All right. Now, where is it undefined? Well, if I look at the derivative, it's undefined at x equals 0. But you know what? The original function wasn't defined at x equals 0 either. Now, x equals 0 goes on our table, but it's not a critical number. Officially, this guy right here is the only critical number. But this guy is where the original function was undefined anyway, and so when I do my table, I still have to consider it. Now what intervals go on my table? Well, please keep in mind that the domain of this function doesn't even include zero anyway because, not because of the denominator, but because the numerator. You can only take the natural log of numbers bigger than zero, positive numbers. So we're going to go from zero to e, and then we're going to go from e to infinity. That's our table. Remember, I'm going to take a test point and plug it into the first derivative. So we could plug in one. That's between zero and e. Remember, e is about 2.1878182. Okay. Um, and then from e to infinity, so remember e to something, so let's plug in 3 or 4 and plug into the first derivative. So, so if I plug 1 into the first derivative, I'm going to have, let's do this in a different color, 1 minus the natural log of 1 over 1 squared. Now remember, we're just trying to figure out if this is positive or negative, right? So we know if it's increasing or decreasing. You all remember the natural log of 1 is 0. So that'd be 1 over 1 squared, which is 1. That's definitely positive. And then plug in 3. So it'd be 1 minus the natural log of 3 over 3 squared. Now we know the denominator is positive no matter what. But 1 minus the natural log of 3, you might, might want to type that in your calculator. I'm going to type that in my calculator. I got negative 0 0.0986. What matters is it's negative. A negative divided by positive is a negative. Okay. Now what did we learn? We know we're increasing and we're decreasing. So if a graph is increasing and then decreasing, we have a relative maximum, right? Where is that relative maximum? Well, we know the x value is at e, right there. What's the y value? We'll take e and plug it into your original function over here. It would be the natural log of e 
over e. Now the natural log of e, remember by definition, is 1, so that would be 1 over e, and that is our relative max. So I'm going to wrap up this section, be done with the part two. Hopefully you won't have any struggles through that section. If you do, please let me know. I only did one of the logarithmic differentiation problems. They do take some practice, but I think that one is probably enough to get you by. If not, just let me know. You have a wonderful day.